If you appreciate this recorded session, we welcome you to join us for our next live group gathering. The link can be found in the description below. And the one thing that a part of me really wishes I could give is the silence because it, it, it's so healing. It's just magic. It's complete magic. And yet even that like most compassionate, heart-based story or orientation, even that is delusion. And even that delusion, any bit of delusion always prevents truth from actually unfolding. Because that requires me to believe that somebody needs stillness or that somebody needs to stop suffering. Or I'm not gonna get into it, but you know, a bazillion other beliefs or unfoldings there that allow it's like layers I just feel like layers and layers but it's like that allows the the view the view that's being held in any given situation there's so many beliefs behind it that allows it to be a view at all right I, on some level I have to hold a the belief in myself and other for that to be possible for it to be possible for me to believe that I wish I could give somebody silence that's suffering I have to hold that I'm over here and there over there on some level and this these are these are things that are ingrained they're so ingrained I have to hold a there's something wrong with suffering, that suffering is something that needs to be fixed in order to have that view, right? The view that I wish I could give them silence or give them healing or, uh, let's see, that there's something wrong at all, that their way of living isn't right or their expression of being isn't right. I'd have to hold that for that to be true. So it's like a, at any given moment, we have this opportunity to see, am I holding a view right now? Am I looking at this situation from a certain perspective? And it's not like perspective, there's right perspective and there's wrong perspective. Perspective is just perspective. So you start, it's sort of like, um, this is just how I see it in my exploration. I start with what, what's going on right now. First of all, the indication that maybe there's a view being held is if I'm uncomfortable at, at any level. Am I uncomfortable? Am I completely at peace or am I uncomfortable? And it's like two different experiences. Even subtly I can feel when there's a bit of something going on because it's like some sort of friction happening. And when there isn't any view when being held at all, there's no friction. There's just flow. It's, it's just ease. So the first indicator is go, okay, am I uncomfortable at all? And we see say that's a yes even subtly right this stuff has like really been so subtle for me lately it's, I'm not like hugely uncomfortable or like grossly upset about situations it's not this big thing which is interesting right and harder to look at in a way but you can start to to feel when you just get to come back to yourself get to know yourself your energetic body you know when there's something off you know when there's something friction going on. And if you're not necessarily working in the subtle, you can work on the gross level or whatever. I'm just explaining it from what's been more recent for me. So it's like, okay, the answer is yes, there's been this subtle discomfort. And then it's tricky when it's subtle discomfort, really, because it's almost so subtle that it's easy to kind of 
there can be so many like mechanisms at play that are uh, could bypass to go yeah well it's not that big of a deal yeah i'm so i'm a little bit uncomfortable but it's not that big of a deal because i'm not grossly triggered it's not that big of a deal right so there can be that kind of stuff right because we learn we learn through our practices and through our non-dual and through our meditations and things on this path we learn techniques to bypass not not as a bad word or a bad thing we learned how to cope maybe that's a better way to say it. we learned how to cope with being discomfort discomfort uncomfortable i guess is better than discomfort we learn how to cope with it right through practice and stuff and those things are valuable at times and needed at times but this path really takes you into the subtle places where you're like huh i am subtly discomfort uncomfortable and I could cope with it. I have great coping mechanisms, but do I need to? Or am I actually more curious to deepen? Because the invitation is always there to deepen. So I deepen because I can't help myself. That's just sort of like, universe is just like, you have no choice, girl. You are going in the depths again, wherever that takes you. And I'm like, okay, whatever. It's good. It's all good. But I'm I'm curious, right? Like I'm like, I I want to know what this is about. I want to know this. I, I want to know how delusion moves through in all its gross and subtle ways. I want to be so familiar with it that I can practically illuminate and help anyone. I that because because that's the place that that's the way practically in the relative that has been drastically helpful to illuminate suffering and transform it. So the indication is, is there discomfort? Yes. Okay. What is the view? What am I holding? Another way to say it is perspective. What perspective am I holding about this situation? Right, I'm trying to give you guys something practical to play with. What am I, how am I looking at this situation? What's my perspective here? Right? Okay, so I'm feeling like um, this person is suffering because I can see them interacting with their conditioning and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go into the details, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not really that triggered by it, but I'm a little triggered by it. Like, this is what I'm holding, right? This is the view that I was holding. And that if I could just, um, I, did, I don't know, I wasn't really holding I need to get through to them, but it was more like I don't, I didn't really know how to interact with it. Like, I didn't feel like I knew what to do with it. Like, I just felt like I didn't have the mechanism in me to go in complicity. So I couldn't really interact with it. And I also didn't have the desire in me to ch try to change it or point it out. So it was sort of this weird, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, kind of the experience of like somebody talking at you and you're just like, don't know what to say. And you're just like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I just do that and keep living my normal life, whatever I'm doing in front of me. So that was fine and that was kind of working, but I think energetically it was something else needed to kind of be worked out. So I just see what's the view I'm holding and what beliefs do I need that allow that view to be held? Because if the beliefs weren't there, then the view wouldn't be there. There isn't a view or perspective of any given moment without beliefs supporting it. And what energy am I giving to it? Because then there we go, well, a belief is just words, they're just thoughts in the mind. Unless you're giving them energy, then they have power, then they have reality to them because you're giving your energy to them. You're giving your creative life force energy to belief, to thought. So you see how we, we kind of start where we are and then we just trace it back closer and closer to the source. And the source is silence. And returning home here in the silence,
bridging the gap with the It's, it's like a, it's, it's subtle again, but it's like a, I want to call it helplessness, though I don't really feel like it's this like, gosh, there's this big problem I'm helpless about. It's, it's more like you, you start to see like, there's nothing I can do here. There's nothing that practically is needed of me here, maybe is a better way to say it. You, you see that and you just go, okay, so we, we return, we return to stillness, to silence. And then we, I just, I saw, it's just so direct this morning, like, oh, like, it, it fixes everything that needs to be fixed. It, it, it shifts or transforms anything that needs to be transformed to return here. Um, to see, again, these pockets of, like, quietness, like, verbal quietness in the, in the house. And it's interesting because to me, it's so different, right? There's a, there's a, I'm, I'm very almost more and more sensitive to energy. Um, so there's like, or, or just even sensory energy, you know, the sound or sensitive, not in a bad way, but just more and more, um, I guess in closer contact with it is a better way to put it. So it's like, if there's, if there's silence verbally, right? There's not actual sound in the room, but the mind is busy, it's almost like I can hear it. I can tell that it's not really that silence isn't really there. You know, it's not ever not there, but it's being kind of still clouded by mind stuff. And I feel this in spaces with myself in my own experience or with others. It's got a buzz to it when there's busyness, even if we're verbally we're not saying anything. It, it's got an, it's an energy that's kind of restless, I guess you could say. So there was moments this morning of silence where that buzz wasn't there, that there was actual below that silence, not just the verbal room being quiet. And in that, it's it's almost it's like in that the the loudness of the silence is just so obvious. That's how I can know. That's how I can hear it. And I think maybe there's just something practical with the the snow and the winter, because people aren't on the road. There's not cars on the road. There's not like a lot of busy energy. You know, like doing energy people going places and doing things a bunch. It's not the day people go to the grocery store usually. I mean, everybody's just kind of huddled in their own little houses and doing what they're doing. So it's quieter. And then also with the snow versus rain is interesting. The snow is like completely silent. Doesn't really make a sound when it hits the ground like rain does. So it's different in a way. Snow silences you in a different way through more quietness and rain almost silences you more by heavy sound in a way or heavy silence cultivated by sound. Also the expression of care, support, compassion is there naturally when it moves from truth, when it moves from the stillness. So it's incredibly powerful to see the subtle difference between it moving from holding any idea 
or view, like I was sharing about a situation versus it just comes naturally. Like, mm, I have not been able to, like my, I have like this subtle thought of, I should probably support mom more. She's hurting or she's going through stuff. And I just haven't been inclined to do that. Like my idea is that I should maybe be doing that, but I haven't felt energetically drawn to doing that physically. And then this morning I just naturally sat by her and rubbed her back and I didn't plan. Like I didn't was like, I should do this for her. You know, like it comes from a different place when we don't believe or don't like, it was sort of like in a way I'm seeing what the uh, self-imposed orientation of mind is saying. And I don't, I don't really have energy that connects to it. So it's not like I'm choosing to not interact with it. I just see it as two different experiences. The mind says you should be, and then the body doesn't respond to that energy anymore, that thought anymore. It doesn't fuel it. So I can't like believe that I should be more compassionate to this person and make myself do that. Uh, you kind you kind of lose that like connection with it, like personal thought and personal will. They don't like connect anymore, or really, you, you, it feels like you lose personal will, the personal directional energy. So I don't have the willpower to direct this energy to believe that thought and engage in a world th through the mix of this, making that into a manifestation. So then it's just thought because it doesn't have the energy behind it to make it into anything. So yeah, I don't know what this is about. I guess maybe, you know, we started with the silence, but I think it's just, um, you know, coming back to that, coming back to that like primal source or that uh, immediate experience of being, which is silence, which is stillness. And um, maybe giving ourselves permission intentionally to uh, trust it or uh, investigate the uncomfortable enough or investigate the delusion enough to where it just unhooks y y your, your sense of energy force unhooks from it and then the energy force naturally resides and moves from the stillness from the truth from the true way of being that is unpredictable moment to moment it's kind of um yeah unhinged or unpredictable we have no idea like i have i have no idea how i will respond and it's sort of like um vulnerable in a way right because I could respond in something that will maybe manifest as something really bad for me or something that hurts you or who knows, right? We don't know, but I don't know. There's this like, I feel like more of interacting with life through the selfing delusion is creates more distortion and trouble than interacting authentically with life through, through the true nature through that expression. Doesn't mean that this can't, the, the, the true nature expression can't show up in, in other ways, but it seems to be like when I actually see that manifest, when I actually see the manifestation of life moving through in its authenticity and not through selfing conditioning, right? This is the path of, of um, deconditioning, but not reconditioning, just staying in the like, non-orientation of life and letting it move you however it does which is so magically unpredictable and it really pisses the mind off because it can't grip it it can't figure it out it can't manifest it it can't make it into anything especially when you lose more and more of that like energy that seemed to have done that before I notice this also in the flow of my my artwork. 
I, it's like when I, um, I don't often step back and look at the big picture. And this is an exp exploration with artwork, but I, I kind of feel like I'm naturally like this with all areas of life where I don't really look at the big picture of things. I'm more like so totally engaged in such a detail that I just get consumed by that. And then I learn to trust it. And then a bunch of details end up becoming a big picture, but I'm never actually trying to plan or paying attention to any big picture of anything. And so I notice this a lot in my artwork where I just get so in the flow of, I don't even know what's happening, but I'm just so close up to the painting and I'm just with this color and this texture and this thing that's happening right, right here. Even though this is like a 60 by 60 canvas, right? I'm like <laughs> zoomed into this little nuance. And um, when I do, because like if I walk in the studio and I see the big picture, just cause just looking at them from further away, then my mind goes, these are dark. Violet, these are dark paintings. They should be brighter. <laughs> and I just like, it's so silly. Like the mind is just so interesting. And I'm like, the reality is, is that I just don't know. I only know what's right in front of me. Like the most immediate experience. That's, that's the only thing that I know. And I don't know it in my mind. I just know it by the experience of it, by color happening and by the sound of a brush and the movement of dancing while I'm painting. And like, all I know, it that's what I know, being in that. And then the insecure thoughts come in and say like, what, what's, what is this series about? What is this gonna, what is this gonna be? You don't know what you're doing. You, you don't know, um, like your composition's off. It's too dark. The colors are really beautiful when you get up close, but when you zoom back, it's muddy. Or you know, my mind is there's a bazillion insecure things, but I just keep seeing it and going, okay, this is interesting, and I just let myself the permission and the freedom to stay really close, to stay really freaking immediate as close as I can possibly get because any distance is distortion. And maybe this isn't what works for everyone. This is just what works here. But I think there's something so true about there's such a lesson in that because when I'm just with the simplicity and the stillness and the immediate moment, whatever it is, I'm using the example of painting, but whatever it is, it's, there isn't a problem there. There is zero friction there. There is just like this exuberant play. And it doesn't even, um, it's not always joy. It can be like a, a darker energy going through, you could call it. But there's just the immediate expression. And it's, it's, I, I learned this because when I, when I know a painting is done, there's such a satisfaction with the big picture. I look back and I'm like, oh my God, it's like perfect color and perfect composition. And like all of a sudden it worked. But if I'm trying to like look at it that way during the process, then I just get in my, my head and I just mess things up. It just, just distorts reality. Taking distance distorts reality. So how do we stop and stay close? How do we return to immediacy, which is stillness, which is quiet, which moves in such a magical, unpredictable way? Where there's flow and no friction at all. And this aligns in the same context of the spiritual path or I want to awaken or I want to be clearer. When we zoom out and, and put the model of myself in time, it is a giant distortion that creates a lot of friction. And it, it kind of prevents the naturalness of the immediate experience to unfold itself, to resolve itself if there needs to be resolving. To be the magic that it is, to be the magic that you are, your true nature, not your character, not your conditioning. The essence that knows which direction is next. 
without having a buy-in to direction. That knows the perfect composition of life's unfolding without understanding art. And here we are again with the thought that says, I thought with this orientation to silence that I would do a guided meditation today for you guys. And here we are talking an hour later. It's so funny. It just cracks me up. But it feels right. As much as my mind can say it should have been. Right? It's the game of the mind. It's the movement of mind is to have friction with reality, to have um, an orientation. But really all of this, this whole hour of talking and energy moving through is completely non-orientation. And that is what touches you in a different way beyond your mind, beyond what we think we're here for into the freedom of the we don't know why we're here. And that's okay. That is okay. That is the true nature to not know. To be abstract. to be abstract expression in the play of composition or form. To show up and not need to rely on any set of rules. to give ourselves permission to not have to use a certain way of speaking or a certain language. Having nowhere to rest. You don't need anywhere to rest. Rest is true nature. That's the point. When we're looking for rest, when we're looking for something to rely on, for something to orient to, for a framework, for a perspective to speak through. When we're looking for that, it's like we dim the light of our natural expression, our natural essence, which is creativity. There isn't a certain way that we have to be, that we have to act, that we have to look. There's only what is, and it's so perfect, just as you are. What you are is not contingent on the color of your eyes, or your hair, or your shape of your body, or the quality of your mind, or your knowledge, or your heart. It's not contingent on any of those manifestational qualities. It's what shines through that. That's what we're attracted to in others. The illumination of free freedom moving through. That's what we see in someone we want to be with. We want to be around. We want to listen to them speak or be in their habitat like an animal. We're amazed, you know, we go to the animal places and we're amazed to see the animals doing what they're doing, being as they are, right? And we love that as humans because we're not, we can see, we can see that they're, they're not have to be a certain way. They don't have an idea that they have to be a certain way, that they have to apologize for who they are. They just are, <laughs> look at the monkeys, they're like 
butt naked going, like licking their balls with their arms, legs in the air. And they're like, I'm just am what I am. <laughs> What's up? You want to watch? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and we're like, we have so much like mind imposed. It's not okay. It's not okay to cry. It's not okay to show vulnerability. It's not okay to whatever. We have these ideas. So the invitation is to return to what we are, to show up as we are. And most importantly, to not give anyone to not give anyone the power to give you or take away from you anything. Especially the true nature. It's not contingent on how much you talk to me or how many YouTube videos you watch or how much you meditate. Your freedom isn't contingent on any of those things. Do them if they feel natural. There's no have to, there's, there's what is. And there's what feels natural. And um, it's like the, you know, I was saying, sharing the example of the, the retreat schedule and how I'm really careful to not create something based on what my mind thinks it should be because my mind has a completely different value system than the essence so to to create whatever it is unfolding through naturalness through alignment that's the word I used this morning in the, the invitation for retreat was I want to create retreat when I feel aligned, when it feels like I'm being called to do that, to be with you guys in that way. And it's not always, I don't always feel like I want to be with you guys at all. Right now I feel a lot of, I just want to be in the studio. So yeah, the invitation is to allow ourselves the freedom to recognize when I am self-imposing how I should be and how do I remember and return to what I am and let it move me, which is going to be different. And it's probably going to be uncomfortable and awkward at first. Or through the whole process, it's uncomfortable and awkward at times. And that's okay. You can be uncomfortable and awkward. It's not a bad thing. It's aliveness in the expression of a feeling. <laughs>